Hi everyone, Brian here, back with a look at another Game Pro review. Another Game Pro issue, I should say. This is Game Pro issue number 66 from January 1995, starting the year off, uh, the new year of 1995 with this first issue. Um, you can see Final Fantasy III Strategy Guide here. This was a very well used issue by me because I had Final Fantasy 3 and was in the midst of playing it or maybe I finished it I don't remember but this it, this cover art I remember it's quite gorgeous Earthworm Jim even though I never played it back in the day look at how hand-drawn and awesome this is just very nice um, you have Earthworm Jim on the front uh, you have an Earthworm Jim strategy guide here for Super NES and Genesis for pro reviews we have NBA, NBA Jams for the Sega CD NFL 95, Doom for Jaguar, Virtual Racing for the 32X, Mega Man X2, of course, for the Super Nintendo, Star Wars Arcade for the 32X, a game that's very common now, you see everywhere with 32Xs, Zero the Common Cottage Scroll, a game I'm still looking for. I've seen it for the Genesis, never for the Super Nintendo. Hot at the Arcades, Killer Instinct, and Samurai Showdown 2, continuing the Killer Instinct look from last issue. So let's open it up and see what's inside. Here we go at the Game Pro table contents for January 1995. You have features, cover feature on Earthworm Jim, part two of this SNES Genesis Pro Strategy Guide. Learn how to keep the bad guys from bearing bear, <clears throat> your, your worm. Blockbuster Video 1994 World Championship Winner's Diary. Blockbuster contestant winners become Game Pro editors for a day. Hot at the Arcades, the AMOA show. The American... In Something uh, the AM uh, the uh, amusement and music operators association arcade show Samurai Showdown two was shown and we have Pro Strategy Guide tips for Final Fantasy three in role players realm. Some pro reviews: Arrow the Acrobat two. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, The Page Master, Sega CD, you had NBA Jams, Corpse Killer, 32X, Virtual Racing Deluxe, Star Wars Arcade, Super NES, Mega Man X2, Super Bomberman 2, Zero the Kamikaze Scrolls, Sonic Blast Man 2, I'm looking for Sonic Blast Man 2, still have the first one, just got the first one, Fun Beat em Up, Operation Thunderbolt, Nickelodeon Guts, Wild Snake, Artie Lightful, Foot, and Carrier Aces. Neo Geo, King of Fighters 94, Jaguar Doom, World Players Well, Guardi Guardian War, I believe that was for the 3DO, it was a fun game I played at my friend's house growing up. Early 3D Polygons, almost looked like an uh, early PlayStation game. Game Gear, Fatal Fury Special, Echo, Dolphin, Echo the Dolphin, Tides of Time. Stargate, I TV show that was on, or a movie that was out. I think it was Ru or um, Kevin uh, Kurt Russell that started it. Panasonic 3DO. I had, and I, I liked 3DO. I had a friend who had it, and we played it a lot of it. Game quality and sequels. Goodbye or goodbye. Here's a car queries. This reader asks, I'm completely disgusted with game manufacturers. Why do they bore us with unoriginal games? Most games are cheap versions of dumb TV shows like The Jetsons or Tom and Jerry or else they're just endless sequels to already existing games. There are enough soccer, Sonic, Sonic Street Fighter 2, and Mortal Kombat games. Come on, you guys. Think up something new. See Earthworm Jim lately? 
We've raved about this and other unique games. Keep reading to see what's new and what's the same old, same old. So I hear this a lot today, too. All we get are the same first-person shooters, same platformers and sequels from Nintendo. And it's a, it's a reoccurring issue through all, all generations. People complain about the lack of originality. But the fact of the matter is, it's just what sells and what it's buying at the time. Companies are going to make those games. And back then, platformers and fighting games were huge, so that's what you got a lot of them. Now it's first-person shooters, and that's what you get a lot with. It comes in waves. What's, what's popular one moment won't be popular the next, and vice versa. So the more things change, the more they stay the same. Uh, looking back in 1995, it's very similar complaints to what they, people have today. Can you, here's an interesting question. This is from Ryan Hughes in Bedford, Texas. Let's get technical. Can you tell me some of the SNES games that use the SNES mouse? The Lab Rat, Lab Rat replies, Mario Paint, Vegas Stakes, and Tin Star, all from Nintendo use the mouse, as does Sunsoft's Acme Animation Factory and Taito's Operation Thunderbolt. Also, you can use a mouse with Super Game Boy games, not to play them, but to decorate and to paint the borders. To purchase the $24.95 mouse, contact Nintendo directly at 1-800-255-3700. Lemmings Tribes never heard it. Lemmings Two Tribes never heard of that game. And here's an offer for a T-shirt giveaway. More envelope art. My favorite Street Fighter character, Guile. I always played with Guile. Here's Samus. Super Metroid. Very cool. Each month's winning artist will receive their choice of any Tyco Barcodes games from Tiger Electronics. Add for Game Gear peripherals. The Cutting Edge Win Knuckles Mech Sonic. Sega won't tell how it's lock on technology and Sonic and Knuckles achieve backwards compatibility, but here are a few heavy heavy hints. Talking about how if you plugged in Sonic 2 and 3, the game would kind of um, change. Blockbuster video game 1994 video game championship winners. Super Nintendo winner, Mark Gunay. I'm sorry if I'm reading his name wrong. I'm kind of reading it upside down. Fred Doughty, Daltry, Doughty, Genesis winner. Looks like they went. The winners, Mark and Fred, went to Electronics Arts and had their images digitally captured to be put in an upcoming EA game, um, Strike Trilogy for the Sega CD. I'm not sure if that ever came out or not.
Hot at the Arcades, the AMOA Show, the Amusement and Music Operators Association, Killer Instinct, Samurai Showdown 2, Way of the Warrior. I remember playing this on my set, my friend's uh, 3DO, and it was kind of neat. I liked it. Operation Wolf 3. I didn't know there was an Operation Wolf 3. If I'm thinking of Operation Wolf on the NES, that's, that's interesting. I did not have an arcade too close to me growing up. There was one close to me in Indiana, PA. I, Aladdin's Castle I used to go to, you know, when I was up at the mall. So I didn't never saw Operation Wolf 3. Making mo movies Mortal Kombat style. Here's an here's about a little bit about the making of the Mortal Kombat movie, which was a big deal at the time. And it's actually turned out to be an okay movie. An ad for Doom for the Jaguar, which is a decent port. Still want to get a Tatari Jaguar. You can see the Atari Jaguar was at Arrow the Acrobat Tube for the Genesis. Got pretty good reviews. The original Arrow was a blast to play with the new visual, visual look, new moves, and an overall new feel. Arrow 2 makes you feel like you're playing a completely different character altogether. If you were a fan of the first Arrow, you're sure to enjoy this nicely improved sequel. Batter up. Pac-Man 2. Got average review, average scores here. Playing with Pac-Man as your pal rather than just a sprite is definitely an acquired taste. The low speed actions the low speed actions best suited for kids with plenty of curiosity, intermediate puzzles, players looking for an unusual challenge, and old timers who just want to party with Pac-Man. Pac-Man is back, man. A lot, of gen a lot of these games I don't remember ever playing. It's funny going back in these and just seeing all these games never played. Maybe you never will play, you know? Just these hit pieces of history, of gaming history, in these pages, you know? Just amazing. Very weird ad, I don't remember. Metal Morph, it's like a looking inside of a cover art infinitely. Corpse Killer on the Sega CD. Looks like a full motion video game, like a lot of them were back in 94, 95. Earthworm Jim. Earthworm Jim, here's some quotes from publishers and the press. Earthworm Jim is without a doubt one of the best games of 1994 from GamePro. If you buy only one video game this year, make it Earthworm Jim. 
you won't be disappointed from the Associated Press. Die Hard Game Fan says, the best game ever to hit the screen. This isn't game of the year, this is game of the decade. Wow, that's that's tall praise. And Game Player says, it's going to take a miracle for another game in the 16-bit category to even compete with our current game for game of the year. So wow, wow, high praise. Flashback for the Sega CD. Look, Virtual Racing Deluxe got very good reviews. Review scores. Star Wars Arcade got okay review scores. Those were both for the 32X. Very common games you see with 32X games. Most of the time I see 32X games, there's always a Star Wars or a Virtual Racing. Another Play It Loud ad from Nintendo. This is for Uni Racers. Mega Man X2, the second in the Mega Man X games on the Super Nintendo. You can see here once again Mega Man X de <clears throat> Devil uh, delivers a smash action adventure, hits with awesome graphics, perfect controls, cool bosses, and a new graphics ship too. Mega Man X2 is a mega monster with all the right elements. It's one of the best installments in the series. If you dug the first game, this one's improved in almost every way. The new C4 chip energizes the already great graphics. The extreme responsiveness controls are perfect, and the levels contain more enemies and hidden locations than any Mega Man cart yet. Mega Man X2 is excellent. Super Bomberman 2. So you got very good reviews, very good review scores here. Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel. Let's see how this reviewed. We've got okay scores. Sonic Blast Man 2. Uh, Sonic Blast Man 2 is a good beat em up brawler for first timers. Veterans can pass as the deja vu pass on the deja vu destruction. This can't this can't this card hits both ends of the fun time spectrum. Veterans players will find Sonic Blast Man 2 too much of the same old thing, but beginners will have a Sonic Blast Man. Hey, you noticed uh, in the last issue there was an ad for Lufia coming for the Genesis. Well, it never did come out. Um, here you see the coming crossed out December. It was pushed back towards spring of 1995. Um, never did come. It says it's worth the wait. Genesis owners are still waiting. Here's Operation Thunderbolt for the SNES. It was used. Could you you could use the mouse? Artie Lightfoot for the Super Nintendo. Carrier Aces for the Super Nintendo.
The King of Fighters, 1994, for the ever-elusive Neo Geo. I've never seen one growing up, never saw one yet. I just saw one in a shop a while ago, um, and that was the Neo Geo CD. I've never seen an AES anywhere. Doom for the Jaguar got pretty good scores. Here's the Earthworm Jim Game Pro strategy guide right here. New Junk City. First level. Earthworm Jim Envelope Art Contest. Grand Prize, a custom cast and hand-painted Earthworm Jim statue created by Tony Cipriano, a professional animation sculpture. This statue is an exact replica of the reference model used by Earthworm Jim's animators in the, crea in the creation of the game. First prize, a rare, groovy, and cool Earthworm Jim t-shirt created by Jim's daddy, Doug Tenapel, as well as the game's Don't Stink Earthworm Jim poster. Second prize, an Earthworm Jim poster to hang, well, wherever you want it. Role Players Realm, Guardian War for the 3DO. I remember my friend had this for the 3DO. Impressive graphics, a fantastic soundtrack, and incredible visual effects are like icing on this RPG cake. Guardian War is one of the most original, enjoyable, and addictive RPG strategy games to come along in a while, and it's certainly the best on the 3DO so far. See, the graphics are kind of early polygonal 3D. Guardian Wars scores big on all counts, especially in its originality. It's highly addictive fun, has a vast array of locations, enemies, and options to add complexity. Guardian War is highly recommended. There's nothing else like it on the 3DO, or frankly, anywhere else. And it was a fun game. Here we go, strategy guide for Final Fantasy 3.
just going through here and reading this, this remind this I brings up memories of me reading this over and over again as a kid, these paragraphs, these picture pictures. Such a great game. Wow, Bubsy 2 came out for the Game Boy. Wow, this had to be... Look at these scores. They actually, fun factor, a 1.0. That's the lowest you can get. I don't think I've ever... I've ever seen any game get a 1.0 in Game Pro before. Bubsy's known as... Bubsy's known as much for his snide wit, charming animated animations, and goofy voices as he is for his gameplay. Unfortunately, almost none of these elements made it into his new pocket-sized game. Hopefully, Bubsy hasn't used up all his nine lives yet, because the game certainly takes away one of them. Poor graphics and gameplay, as well as a personality shortage make Bubsy to anything but the cat's meow. These CD ads. I think I actually joined one of these before. You get so many CDs for a penny and you had to commit to buying so many a year. They were kind of a scam to get you to join, be committed for a year. But you actually get them in the mail. Never played Clay Fighter 2. I did have the first one and liked it. Not that great, I, but it, I thought it was okay. Here's the strategy guide for balls. I was a big fan of the Wolverine comic growing up. In fact, it was the only comic I ever read. Had a few issues of X-Men, but I really was intrigued by Wolverine. Just his mystique. Nobody knew much about his past. His inclusion into, like, his delving into Japanese samurai, um, his Japanese samurai storyline, his Japanese heritage was very intriguing to me. Um, I just really, really liked him. Never played the Super Nintendo version game though. Played the NES one. Here's interesting. You'll spend weeks trying to conquer Shelton, but exploring his world takes much longer. Might and Magic 3. I have this game. I could never get far in it. It was very difficult. I never knew how to play it. Um, I don't think part of the reason. I think part of the reason was. It just never translated well into a console game. It was basically a PC game pushed over to a console game, and it never really made for a good game. I never knew you could use the mouse on it, though. I might have to give it a second try. Here's a code for Lester the Unlikely for a stage select. When the title screen appears, rapidly tap buttons X and Y.
continue to press these buttons until the stage select screen appears. Choose your stage and hit start to begin play. Splatterhouse 3, play the last level. Use the password URUURU. Well, Aladdin on the Game Gear. Never knew it was out for the Game Gear. Death and Return of Superman. I'm looking for that game. It's like a beat em up. We're not worthy. Neo Geo, Samurai Showdown 2. They're all bowing down like in Wayne's World. We're not worthy. In Samurai Showdown series, I loved, I was mesmerized in the arcade. The characters would zoom in. You'd zoom in when you get real close and the sprites were so nice and detailed like a lot of the SNK games, fighting games were at the time. Here's a, Fighter's Edge had Way of the Warrior for the 3DO. Here's Street Fighter the Movie collectible cards. Interesting. Brain Lord Strategy Guide for $9.95. Genesis 32X here on Game Pro Labs. Welcome to the next level. The Genesis 32X is here, and though it's harder to set up than a de de democracy in Haiti, it's still worth the asking price. It was 159.99 when it came out. Here's the X-band modem for the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo was $69.99 when it came out with a subscription to the X-Band Network, $7.99. Buyers beware. I was going to buy an Amiga CD32 until I read the Commodore went out of business. Is this true? The answer the watchdog says the U.S. division of Commodore is definitely out of business, so forget that CD32. Goes on to say, um, current owners of the 30 CD32 may be slightly encouraged because Commodore in the UK is trying to pick up the Amiga technology from its failed US venture. So who's to say that this won't it won't pick up the CD32 technology too? Keep hoping.
Demolition Man for the 3DO. Yeah. Miss for the Sega CD. Bonk's Revenge for the Game Boy. Hmm. Phantom 2040 for the Genesis and Super NES. The Great Circus Mystery starring M Mickey and Minnie. I believe that's a sequel to the Ma Disney's Mad Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse. Cadillacs and Dinosaurs for the Sega CD. I always wanted to play this game. I hope I can actually... If I'm thinking it's... It looks like it's different from the 2D beat-em-up that I remember, though. I don't know if the CD had a different version. This almost looks like a cartoon animated full-motion video game. It was like full-motion, like, quick-time game almost, where you had to hit the controller, like Dragon Slayer, when, when it asks for the right input. I'm not sure, though. Captain Commando. Just picked this up. I was very lucky to get it. Always love looking at these as a kid. All these, look at that screen, the stereo. Fill in, I actually tried to do these once. You kind of fill in the crossword and you send it in for a chance to win all this. Overseas Prospect, Ridge Racer. Here's the first look at the Sony PlayStation. Sony's PlayStation should have the processing muscle. Little would we know that this little bur blurb right here, this machine right here would change the landscape of, of games, consoles, and games for video games forever. Here's a blurb on the street on Raul Julia dying. Street Fighter movie actor dies. On a sad note, actor and political activist Raul Julia died on Long Island, New York in October. He was 54. During his career, Julia starred in many stage and screen productions, including his acclaimed role as Gomez Adams in the Adams Family movies. His final role was M. Bison in the film Street Fighter. So he died in October 1994. Nintendo goes online. This caught my interest. To supplement its launch of Donkey Kong Country on November 21st, Nintendo drove on the information superhighway with CompuServe in mid-October, CompuServe hosted a real-time conference with Nintendo exec execs Minoru Arakawa, President Howard Lincoln, Chairman and Pete Chairman and Peter Main, Vice President of Marketing. The three men in a in a modem chat was followed by an online trivial trivia contest 
that ran through November previews of Donkey Kong Country via digital movies in another technical conference to discuss Nintendo's advanced computer modeling ACM process first used in Donkey Kong Country. Game tips and other inside information were also part of the conference. Transcripts of the conference and Donkey Kong Country movie clips available in IBM and Macintosh forms are available online. CompuServe members interested in checking them out should log in and type Go Nintendo. More Ultra 64 news. Nintendo recently signed a strategic alliance with Multigen Inc. to create exclusive 3D graphics tools for the Ultra 64. This is the second agreement Nintendo has made for Ultra 64 tools, the first being a deal with Alias Research, Pro News, Game Pro October 1994. Nintendo intends to use Multigen. Gen's technology to create games that allow players interaction in real-time 3D scenarios. Multigen has previously created high-end flight simulations in virtual reality environments on Silicon Graphics workstations. The Ultra 64 is a joint venture between Nintendo and Silicon Graphics. And there we have, we end this look at Game Pro issue number 66 for January 1995. I hope you enjoyed this look at this issue. Um, starting off the year 1995 with a bang with this thick issue, a lot about Earthworm Jim. A little brief nugget about the PlayStation and Ridge Racer and Namco supporting it big time. And just overall arcade games you had uh, Samurai Showdown 2 as well as um, King of Fighters 94 um, so Mega Man X was also reviewed so I hope you enjoyed this look before I ramble on too much I hope you enjoyed this look at this latest at this issue of Game Pro until next time everybody take care <laughs>